Jeff T is a shill. Why do you say that? Hasn't he done amazing work exposing the new world order? Jeff T is a shill. 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 Hey, 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 everyone. How you doing? It is me, Jeff C. And it is Monday, March the 9th. Beware the Ides of March. Yes. <laughs> I am back in the saddle again. Free Radio Revolution is now Jeff going to be show. back Why up and show. running, albeit in a slightly altered sort of fashion. Um, going to be doing some changes in the way... And um, so that that's the first part. What I wanted to say is that I'm going to pull back from, from promoting. I think the, the foundations are there for the community. I think that all these things have huge impact on our future. And that's what I will be focusing on. I will be focusing primarily on events that will affect us. You know, And I don't really delve into all of the you know, uh, occult stuff and all that. It's not my, my genre. We have guys like KJ Osborne and Police State Radio and, and people like that that really know their stuff and they do a great job with that. But I'm going to focus on, you know, just exposing what's going on out there. What what is what I think is important, to, you know, and what, you know, it fits within the realm of my sort of understanding of, of the world sort of thing. I'm not going to try to jump out of what I, you know, the, the areas that I'm, not well, you know, uh, versed in, for instance, like the occult. Although occasionally, yes, it does cross over and stuff like that. But yeah, um, it's uh, it's a battle, folks. It's a psychological battle. Every time you go on the internet, every time you you watch a video, I know uh, Mark Patio, who I'm going to have on the show. I know uh, Mark Passio, who I'm going to have on the show hopefully pretty soon, I'm trying to organize that, um, said that he doesn't allow any comments on any of his videos because he knows exactly how these um, these shills work, essentially, that they'll come in and they'll, they'll come in to sway public opinion. My guest today is Mark Passio. He is an independent researcher, radio talk show host, a public speaker, and yep, also a freedom a activist from Philadelphia, that? Pennsylvania. And he has assembled a vast amount of knowledge on occultism, uh, spirituality, metaphysics, symbology, and consciousness. You can find all of that information on his website. But what does that mean? Um, what does that mean as far as you are practicing? Was that like Satanism, Luciferianism, some sort of other dark occult that I don't really know about? And then, of course, what compelled you to kind of seek out that knowledge? And, and what was it that helped you kind of realize that maybe that wasn't wh where you wanted to spend your energy? Sure, that's a really great question. Well. In my youth, I kind of accepted, uh, without much questioning, a lot of the uh, religious dogma and indoctrination that I had been given by family members and school teachers. And I come from a, uh, a pretty standard Roman Catholic Italian background in South Philadelphia. And my family was kind of the type that never really uh, challenged belief systems, certainly never questioned authority, anything like that. Uh, and, you know, back then when I was given a lot of those dogmatic beliefs and kind of accepted them, uh, I certainly lacked a lot of the knowledge about uh, what religious indoctrination is about and why it's done. I certainly didn't know anything about astrotheology at that time. Where is our world going? How is the Illuminati plan progressing? We are joined for the rest of the hour by best-selling author, researcher, uh, occult researcher, Jordan Maxwell. And Jordan Maxwell uh, really is a great political and geopolitical, but also esoteric mind. And, you know, I, I don't know what to do about it. Where is your head? I very much appreciate your time. It's always a pleasure uh, to... Uh, be interviewed by someone 
uh, who knows uh, almost as much as I do. <laughs> I leave a little for myself. <laughs> you are a giant, and, you, and I thank appreciate you, your time. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, he is under the weather, but he has still agreed to join us. We really appreciate it. David Icke of DavidIcke.com, former head of the Green Party in England, former uh, champion goalie in soccer, former top BBC uh, sports news presenter who kind of had his uh, Saul of Tarsus moment on the road to Damascus, knocked off his horse, and basically got this download of info, as he describes it, about the world, about world government. And David Icke joins us from England. He is a former champion goalie, a BBC TV uh, and sports uh, national host, uh, head of the Green Party, and now known as uh, one of the, quote, biggest conspiracy theorists. Well, there's David Icke and myself. I mean, that's who people will talk about. And then there's kind of when it comes to radio, uh, people like George Norrie. But, uh, I mean, who, who are the uh, mountains of, quote, conspiracy uh, there's only three or four people out there, and that's why it's important that those of us that are trying to get people to expand their horizons, to expand their awareness of what's going on in this universe outside the globalist artificial box or matrix, that's why it's important that we uh, work together uh, and uh, not uh, be divided. And that's why it's so important um, that we support the work that David Icke is doing, because uh, the fruits of his work are only good. And, uh, of course... Christ was yep, quoted as saying, why? you judge a tree by its fruits, uh, and David uh, joins us now. David, first off, for the balance of this hour, uh, we're going to be joined by Foster Gamble and his wife, Kimberly Gamble, both filmmakers uh, who've made the film Thrive, very well produced. Months ago, listeners would call up and say, what do you think of this? And I said, well, I haven't That's seen it, so I got a copy, got so busy, didn't watch it for a few weeks, uh, and uh, finally did watch it. And I think that they're coming from a place of really trying to get people outside the box and to wake up. And you could call it a little new agey. You know, it, it questions the big lie of, well, are there space aliens? Uh, and they don't say one way or the other. They just say, can we trust a government that's been caught lying about all this? Um... You know, films like Zeitgeist, the first one came out, and of course I wasn't involved in it, I wasn't asked to be involved, they used a lot of my material. People got mad at me because it's really an anti-Christian, anti-religion film at first, then it gets into the Federal Reserve, the New World Order. So I agree with two-thirds of the first Zeitgeist. One-third of it is attacking people that have faith or a spiritual consciousness. Uh, Thrive doesn't do that, so I, I like it a lot more because I've had spiritual experiences. I have a relationship with my creator. I don't judge others that are in other religions and have had their experiences. I know that, that something's going on out there. I consider the groups I was involved in very low level, certainly not high level by any stretch of the imagination. I do consider that LaVey was sort of a puppet for these higher level satanic networks and groups and certainly worked with governmental institutions during the time that he was alive. Uh, and, you know, most people don't really understand what the ideology of Satanism is. They think it's about devil worship. It has nothing to do with the worship of the Christian notion of the devil. Uh, this is uh, Satanism basically has four main tenets or overarching principles of belief. And that is that self-preservation is the highest goal. And um, you should, you know, understanding reality as it really is. But the scientists kind of dismiss that. So they're going, this is a mystery. But when you understand you've got this unifying field, which unifies everything, suddenly the, the, the paranormal becomes perfectly body logical. And it's not new age. Some people who do it, are, you call themselves new age. What it is, is simply understanding reality on a level that mainstream science does not understand and does not want to understand. Why? Because it's controlled by the same network and the last thing that network wants the target population to do is understand the nature of the reality it's experienced. That's right. Going to break back in 60 seconds and by the way, I did look it up. Guess what the Grove's on? The very same ley line. And I want him today to use a few examples that, 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 that he brought up to me that people can easily understand of programming in Hollywood and in television. And then I want to ask him, why do we suddenly see open satanic rituals at the Super Bowl with Madonna and with all the other big uh, singers and people? What are they trying to usher in? Or is it programming our subconscious? Is it science or is it a cult?
Do they really believe in spirits at Skull and Bones, or are they using it as an archetype in the Carl Jung way? Let's 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 just get past all the religious dogma and and and, and what men and priests try to say God is, the universe is. Let's talk about what the elite themselves believe. In my youth, I kind of accepted, uh, without much questioning, a lot of the uh, religious dogma and indoctrination that I had been given by family members and school teachers. Uh, and, you know, back then when I was given a lot of those dogmatic beliefs and kind of accepted them, uh, I certainly lacked a lot of the knowledge about uh, what religious indoctrination is about and why it's done. I I know uh, Mark Passio, who I'm going to have on the show hopefully pretty soon, I'm trying to organize that, um, said that he doesn't allow any comments on any of his videos because he knows exactly how these um, these shills work, essentially, that they'll come in and they'll, they'll come in to sway public opinion. I know that True Theorcy uh, ruffled a lot of feathers being on our show, but I think he also had a lot of uh, really interesting things that he said i mean he he, he really uh, is a very intelligent person with a different perspective and we shouldn't be afraid of somebody else seeing the world in a different way some people don't want it they fear this transition because this transition is to a planetary civilization tolerant of many cultures these are the terrorists the in their gut they fear this because they know they are witnessing the birth pangs of the beginning of a new planetary civilization, and the terrorists want nothing to do with it. Especially somebody who spent as much time as he has researching and coming up with his own theory on things. And it's his theory. It doesn't mean it's right. It's just his. We Should we be scared of, of uh, one person um, who is questioning a lot of things in religion and, you know, and... Why do you think the five books of Moses are called the Torah? For the exact same reason, we have a tarot, which comes from the red-hot fire fertility of the torch. The Torah, or Tura, the sun god. So the tarot is the fire fertility root of the tree of knowledge. And that's why the Star of David, or the Star of Divide, is about the union of sex magic. The red hot rock meets the woman's water. Why do you think Moses encountered a burning bush? Because we're talking about this kind of burning bush. And that's why he was found in the fertility bulrushes. Why do you think the Israelites were increasing in numbers and they were slaves in Egypt? Because the children of Israel are the sperm or the semen. And that's why they're held captive and they want to get released and Moses will do it because Moses or Musa means the water tree sun. How do you think Moses separated the Red Sea? He did it with his long hard staff. And now you know the meaning of the pillar of fire. And that's why Moses separated the water. And that's why the Bible tells you Moses stretched out his hand over the sea and moved it all night long. I bet he did. Now that he played with the water and parted the, the show. Sea, Why do you say that? Hasn't he done amazing work in. exposing the and new that's world why order? Moses led his Israelites or his sperm to the promised land, to the mountain of... And I think one of the things that True, True Theorcy was kind of saying, um, I don't want to put words in his mouth, so he'll probably come here and, and, and explain it himself, but basically saying kind of what I believe is that all religions are a form of mind control. That doesn't mean they're negative. It doesn't mean that, you know, because mind control can be fun. I mean, it can be, uh, it's, it's, uh, I don't want to get myself into trouble here. Mind control, okay. Uh, but I am going to call a spade a spade. And I think the Jason A. Uh, apocalypse, doom porn, fear porn show has been going on long enough. And uh, I'm going to say my opinion on it. If you don't like it, well, you know what you can do. <laughs> One of the people I subscribe goes out of his way to discredit another person in the truth movement. That person is not in the truth movement, not in my truth movement. I am fucking sorry, okay? If you're putting out every single day or, you know, twice a week, you're putting out 
these videos that are saying the end is near, 2013, you know, uh, apocalypse imminent, you know, um, Comet Ison hitting planet Earth. You're not a truther because you're dealing with nothing but fucking lies. Okay, yes, I do know about the New World Order, obviously. I know uh, Mark Passio, who I'm going to have on the show hopefully pretty soon, I'm trying to organize that, um, said that he doesn't allow any comments on any of his videos because he knows exactly how these... Um, these shills work essentially that they'll come in and they'll, they'll come in to sway public opinion so holy shit this comment section the end is definitely near this time get off the internet and get to church as soon as possible i have to say that's probably a joke if you throw enough shit Nazi against the wall, so it's bad why do you say that? That's all As these done amazing work do. exposing I the have new to agree. World I mean, this stuff, this is what they're doing. And this person here, God fearing, <laughs> God fearing. What has he got? A gun or something? Yeah, it is a gun. You know, most people don't really understand what the ideology of Satanism is. They think it's about devil worship. It has nothing to do with the worship of the Christian notion of the devil. Uh, this is uh, Satanism basically has. understand what the ideology of Satanism is. They think it's about devil worship. It has nothing to do with the worship of the Christian notion of the devil. Uh, this is, uh, Satanism basically has four main tenets or overarching principles of belief. Well, I think a good uh, precursor to this would be to simply explain what the occult is, because many people hear that word and they really don't understand what it means, and they have an erroneous perception of what occultism in general is. The word occult is derived from the Latin language. It comes from the Latin adjective occultus. Occultus in Latin simply means hidden from sight. And, you know, the verb occultare in Latin, occultare, means to hide, to conceal, or to keep secret. And all uh, that's all the occult is. The occult is knowledge that has been hidden for particular reasons. And we can get into what those reasons are, but it's knowledge that is hidden and held by very few people. And when you hide and uh, hold uh, very important knowledge uh, tight to yourself and you try to keep it sequestered from everyone else, what you are doing in that instance is you are creating a power differential through the knowledge differential that you've created. I mean, we've all heard the term knowledge is power. And that is what these dark occultists do who are using this knowledge, certainly not to uplift humanity. They're using it to create a power differential in the world so that they can stay entrenched in power and they could take advantage of everyone else who is trapped in their ignorance. The occult is simply hidden knowledge held by very few people who exploit that knowledge uh, at the expense of all of the ignorant people, the ignorant masses who have no idea what that knowledge is or how it works. Now, the next question that would naturally come up for people is, well, what is the knowledge of the occult? What type of knowledge are we really referring to or talking about here when we talk about occultism in general? Occultism is a body of science, which is just not generally known to the wide body of human beings. It's hidden knowledge about two overarching fields of um, study of, uh, of human endeavor. Uh, that being said, those two bodies of knowledge really constitute everything that humanity needs to understand to become free. That's why it is hidden. That's why it is occulted, because the people who are currently enslaving humanity and who, who are currently running our society don't want to, the playing field to be leveled by this knowledge being understood by people. Because if people understood it in mass, they would be able to empower and free themselves from what is being done to them, from them being kept in the condition of human slavery as they are right now. Occult knowledge is neither good or bad. It's not 
uh, something that is inherently positive or negative. The consciousness of the wielder of that knowledge will ultimately determine whether that knowledge is actually being applied for good or ill. In other words, either for the uplift of humanity by spreading it and distributing that knowledge throughout the human population and therefore enlightening people and making them be able to be informed and make their own good choices and good decisions in harmony with the spiritual laws of nature, natural law. I know uh, Mark Passio, who I'm going to have on the show hopefully pretty soon. I'm trying to organize that. And that's the difference that I would describe between light occultism or what I simply have come to call de-occultism, which is what I consider myself a de-occultist, someone who is trying to bring that hidden knowledge out into the light of day for all to see and understand, versus dark occultism. Dark occultists want to deliberately hide and keep that knowledge hidden in order to create and maintain that power differential that they currently have.